This sequence works towards Surya Yantrasana, which is sundial pose. I just find that very beautiful and poetic. Um, so the sequence is going to work on backs of the legs, hamstrings, also side body, which usually feels really nice to work on, and then outwards rotation for the hips. Prop-wise, it'll be useful to have a cushion because it's a seated posture, a belt, particularly if you have tight hamstrings, and uh, maybe a couple of bricks as well. As always, feel free to ask questions and I would love to hear how you get on. Enjoy! right into the center of your heart and see if there is an intention for you, the day ahead and for this exact moment in time. So an example would be, I'm in full radiant health and imagine how would that look? right now. Could you visualise it? Could you imagine seeing it? And as you create this visual in your mind, seeing yourself in this perfect state, just start to blossom your fingertips out and away from each other into Lotus Mudra. What are the colours in this image? Maybe there are smells, sounds. Make it as vivid as possible. Welcome it right here, right now. So that you're really directing your energy towards this feeling or this state or this image entirely. You're giving yourself a very, very clear direction. And then you let your palms draw back together as if you're closing your flower for the evening. But you rest that intention deep into your heart, so it's still there. Bow the head. Open the eyes. And lift the focus. Nice, take your right leg out onto the diagonal. And certainly like me, you can uh, raise your seat if it's a little more comfortable than sitting on the ground. And then you take your left hand just behind your left leg. That leaves you with your right arm free. So that's the one that's gonna swoop across in front of you. And then as it lifts above your head, you push into the ground and draw your pelvis up. And then as you breathe out, the pelvis and the arm come back down. Yeah, so they're working kind of in symphony. You push down into the ground, you sweep the arm across the front and take the right arm all the way up overhead. And then everything falls back down. A couple of times, inhale to lift, exhale to lower. One more breath in, and breathe out. And then the next time that your pelvis lands, bend your extended leg, bring both hands forwards, and just uh, settle here for a moment. This is not a particularly um, yoga sort of asana, this is not a sort of classical yoga asana, but it's a useful position to get used to when considering our peak posture, which today is Surya Yantrasana, 
um, has a couple of different um, names. One is sundial pose, the other is compass pose. And this is kind of like a good little entry um, point for that posture, which you'll see um, sort of unfold later. How are your hips here? How's your lower back? Are they allowing this movement already or not? And then let's just switch it over to the other side. So the same little sequence, but now your left arm is free. You sweep it across in front. You inhale and take the hips and the arm up. And then you exhale and everything descends. Again, inhale, push down to sweep up. Descend, twice more, breathe in. Breathe out. Last time. Nice. And then bend the extended knee. Plant the foot on the ground and lean forwards as if you're trying to listen to me. What also feels quite nice is if you hook your arm in front of your shin and give it a little squeeze. And how are the hips responding? Lower back. And maybe this all feels a little bit creaky and tight. Hopefully the sequence um, should warm these areas up a little bit and they'll be more comfortable um, as we get closer to the peak posture. And then bring that leg in front of you and rock yourself into all fours. In all fours, inhale, lift your focus, lower your navel back, bend. Exhale, reverse curve. And again, breathe in, back bend. And breathe out. Spine comes back between those two curves. Tuck all ten toes underneath. Rock your hips back towards your heels. And then drift your hips high, downwards facing dog. Now notice how your hamstrings feel. How are the backs of your legs today? This is another contributing factor to the peak pose. Perhaps it would feel nice to bend one knee and keep the other leg straight and just take a few breaths there. And then switch it over. and then extend both legs again. Bring your knees down onto the ground and take your left leg back and away behind you. So straight back and away behind you. Spin that back heel down and open your top side. So your left hip is gonna lift up, your left arm, left side of your chest is gonna all stack up onto your side. Yeah? So you're on your side. You can definitely stay here. If you would prefer to give yourself a little balance challenge, then you can take your back foot up off the ground. Feel the relationship between the top of your pelvis and the bottom of your ribs. So this connecting space between them is a little bit awake. Nice. And then put that back foot down. Draw the top hand back down onto the ground and this leg that's back is just going to slide up your, off the edge of your mat until it's a little bit, <coughs> your foot is a little bit further forwards than your knee. Spine comes into a comfortable, long position. 
you can stay up on your fingertips, or feels strong usually for adductors, inner thigh, is to go down to the forearms. And there'll be some of you, again, who will find it pleasant even to go further and rest your forehead down. And then push into your hands and creep them back in underneath your shoulders. The back leg reverses exactly the way it came. But now you squeeze your left knee in towards your nose and cat the back. Tuck the other toes, they're your right toes. Push down into those three points that are touching the ground. And then sweep the left leg up and away behind you, three-legged dog. But draw the left hip high again. Bend the left knee and take a few breaths. Extend left leg long and then step left foot between. Whoop, I just got the plant. Step the left foot between the two hands. Place the back knee down and sweep both arms up. Bring the hands back down to the ground and see if you can find yourself two bricks or two books because you're going to come into half Hanumanasana. So you're walking your hands back and you're straightening out that front leg. The, the bricks are very, very often helpful um, you can sometimes get a little bit of a strain to put the hands on the ground. And you're kind of again just searching around for space, mobility into the back of the leg. Maybe you feel it in the hamstrings, maybe a bit in the calves. Obviously if you're more mobile in that region then you could take your bricks a little bit lower. Good. And then we'll rock our weight forwards again. So just re-bend your front knee, move the bricks just up off the edge of your mat, tuck the back toes and go back to downwards facing dog, hips high. Just notice right side, left side, do they feel the same or different? And then heels high and knees to the ground. Good, second side, so now it's the right leg that slides back and away, the right heel that spins down, and the right side that draws up and open to the sky. Again, you can stay here, or you can hover your back foot up off the ground. Bring that back foot down, bring your top arm down, and then that leg that's back slides up off the edge of your mat. Foot goes perhaps a little bit further forwards than your knee. Option one is up on your fingertips, two is down on your forearms, and three is arms kind of like downwards facing dog and forehead resting.
walk the hands back. Slide your right leg all the way back around. And then squeeze the right knee in towards your nose, cat your back. Tuck the left toes and sweep the right leg up high, three-legged dog. Draw right hip towards the ceiling, bend right knee. Extend right leg long, and then use that cat back again to step your right foot between the two hands. Place the back knee down, both arms lift, breathe in. Breathe out, hands come down and they find your bricks or books. Half Hanuman just means that you extend out your front leg and deepen the bend in your back knee. If you find this a real puffy, then like lots of the forward bends, you just keep raising your platforms. Um, until it's reasonable. You could definitely have a, a chair in front of you and you could put your hands on the chair if you need a bit more height. Ideally, you want the stretch to be in the belly of the muscle, which is not the easiest thing to find, but is possible. Yes, you want it in the middle section of the muscle and if that means going gentler, then that's good. You definitely don't really want to be able to feel it right up at the uh, pelvis or down under below the knee. Good, and then you re-bend your front knee and rock your weight forwards. Get rid of the bricks for now. Press palms, tuck back toes, lift back knee, hips up, down and facing dog. Again, how are the backs, the legs feeling now? Is this feeling any different than it was for the first dog of the sequence? And then keep the gap between the feet, but walk your feet closer to your hands. So keep the gap between the feet. Perhaps find your bricks again. And bring yourself into Uttanasana, which is just a standard forwards bend. But ideally, we want it with the legs straight, which is why the props are, are useful. Um, it would better, be better to have your legs straight and your body higher up then your knees bent and your hands on the ground because we're trying to stretch the hamstrings because they relate to our peak posture. Again, you can use the chair in front of you if that feels better. If you know you can go lower, great. If you're in the really low versions, just check where the weight is in your feet. Tendency is when we're more flexy is to rock the weight back into the heels. Try and bring some of it forwards into the front of the foot. Bring your hands onto your hips, navel in and hinge up to stand. Ooh, breathe in, lift the arms. Breathe out, hands to heart. Coming into Rukshasana or tree pose, take your right foot and put it on your left ankle or calf muscle or inner thigh. Bring your hands together in front of you and take your hands once again into Lotus Mudra so you blossom them open. Remind yourself of your intention, your word, your feeling, or your visualization. So that you're always steering yourself back onto the direction that seemed resonant, like it had resonance for you, like it was important to you. I'm in full radio inhale. Or whatever it is that's just kind of speaking loudly today, feeling pretty steady on your standing foot, you can make it a little trickier by taking your heel off the ground. Good. 
a little challenge to play with. And then we'll try the other side. The only rule really is that the foot goes above or below the knee. So yeah, you can choose anywhere along your leg, just not on the side of the knee. Obviously it's a hinge joint. It's not going to enjoy that so much. You get the wobbles, you can always put your foot down by your ankle. A little hover of the heel off the ground is something you can play with. then put your foot down, put a big gap between your feet and have the feet just slightly angled out just for this uh, version of Malasana. The knees bend, the forearms drop onto the thighs, part one. If you know you can carry on, you could drop your hips all the way down towards the ground, broaden the, broaden the space across your collarbones and drift your heart towards your thumbs. If you want to split the difference, if you're kind of almost there but it's a little bit and too much, then take your bricks and use them as a little seat. Oops, and it's quite a lot more comfortable usually. Sometimes you get um, the situation where it's pretty comfortable to be down, but the heels are off the ground. You get the um, Achilles, kind of, you can feel the sensation in the Achilles. And um, in that instance, you could get a fold up black, folded up blanket and put something underneath your heels just so you feel a little bit more steady, a little bit more grounded. So any of those versions are all great. Another three to five breaths. And then you find your easiest route to sit. So if you're already low to the ground, it might be that. <laughs> if you've got bricks, you might want to take your hips up, move them out of the way, and then find your way down. And then probably it will be useful to just grab either your folded blanket or a cushion and raise your seat. We're sort of looping around to where we began the sequence. You're going to take your right leg out onto the diagonal again. But now you're going to direct yourself towards it and come to Janushasasana, this forwards bend. So you breathe in, you lengthen up through the spine, and then as you breathe out, you start thinking about moving above and beyond your extended leg. Above and beyond, above and beyond. Again, remember, um, you don't want to feel the stretch at the top or the bottom of the hamstring. Ideally, you want to feel the activity somewhere in the middle. And that may mean staying up high. You know you can easily fall down, feel free. Journey back up, face back forwards, so you kind of open yourself up a little bit more. And uh, this is really important, I think this is really helpful for where we're headed next. You're going to take your same arm in front of the extended leg and spin your side ribs up and open, so your left side ribs up and open as you reach over in that same play. So you really want to feel the side body and the space between your ribs, your intercostals. It might be that you're somewhere around here. Or some of you may well be able to go all the 
the way over, but keep thinking about spinning the top ribs up and open. A nice sort of midway version is with a little elbow rest. I love this because your head gets to lean on your hand. And then arm back first, body and head, and then bend that extended knee. Cool, so from here, lean your body forwards, and we're exactly back where we began. So how does this feel now? How are the hips and the lower back responding to this now? They feel a little bit juicier, a little bit warmer, or not? If they're feeling pretty good, and all that hamstring business was fine, then why not have a go at Surya Yamtrasana? So this is our um, peak posture, um, sun dial pose or compass pose. You take the left hand across to the right foot, so you're going to opposition, and you're going to lift that foot in front of you. So your right arm is threaded through that loop that you've created with your arm and your leg. This version is the version without the belt, so it's a little bit stronger on the back of the leg. Go slowly, go carefully. Just like we just did, you extend the leg and you spin open the right side of the rib cage. You're pushing down through your right hand, so you feel pretty steady, pretty grounded. Hey Jeff, and you can breathe. This is kind of somewhere around here. Then it might be um, kind of handy to have a go with the belt. You just loop it around the top of the foot and it just gives you a little bit more grace. It gives you a bit of slide space so that the hand and the foot don't have to be connected. Nice, and then let's have a go on the other side. So first of all, it's Janusha Sasana. Extend your left leg out. Raise your seat. Breathe in. Either stay there or edge forwards. Come back up, open yourself back up, and then left arm in front of left leg, spin right side of rib cage up and open, and you're going the same direction as the leg, so you're not going to the side, you're going on that forwards diagonal. You got a handy little lean of your left um, elbow or forearm, and again, just ribs up and open, up and open, up and open, just like you would in Suryantrasana. You got the option to creep lower, to hook onto the big toe. You need to be a little bit higher, then use the little um, prop that I showed before where you put your prop underneath your elbow. And then the arm comes first, the head and the body, and you bend that left knee in. Edge forwards. Feel it out first. If you're carrying on, take your right hand and reach it across to your left foot. So again, it's that opposition now. The left arm is threaded through the gap that you've created. You push the hand into the ground. And you draw the ribs up and open, the side body up and open as the leg extends. Feel free to have a go with the belt loops around your foot if you prefer. And 
And you're creating with your body like a, the position of a needle pointing in a direction on the compass. Or a sundial telling you the time. They're all giving you direction. Great, bring the leg all the way back down. Release yourself out from that knot and give yourself a little squeeze. Now come to lie down onto your back. Press into your feet and just lift the pelvis up. Keep the thighs, the feet parallel. Nestle the shoulders in underneath you one at a time. Push the arms into the earth. You're welcome to stay there. You could even make it a passive back bone by putting a brick underneath your pelvis and just resting your weight on it. Or you can take your hands either side of your head and go up into full wheel if that's in your practice. And then lower yourself all the way down and just windscreen wipe the knees. So essentially now you can actually do um, a twist of your choice. So both knees to the right and just leave them there. Spread or lift the arms, relax the head to the left. If you like a slightly stronger twist, then you can have the knees up and stacked or the thighs stacked. You can even have your right leg long, left knee up, and twist over that way. Whichever one feels better for you. And then switch to your second side. Same twist, second side. Bring the knees back up, stay lying down on your back and come into Shavasana. So you're lying down completely flat on your back, but make yourself really as comfy as you possibly can. So lay a blanket over you, put your jumper on, get whatever you need, get cosy, get cosy. And then once you're lying down, take a deep breath in and sigh. Feel the weight of the bones of the body, heavy. And let the structural musculature of the body just soften, relax. Notice the gentle rise and fall of the breath. There is nothing left to do but be. Let go.
You're so welcome to stay here longer. Or you can feel your breathing deepen. Now ripple a little wave of movement out down the arms and legs into the hands and feet. And then one by one, hug the knees in towards your chest. Roll onto your side. And press your way up into a comfortable seat with the hands together in front of your heart. Return one last time to Lotus Mudra. Eyes closed. And remind yourself of your direction for the day. What is it you're welcoming right now? I am in full radiant health. peace. What is it for you? And then bow the head.